Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, we got our initial glimpse at Thunderlord over nine years ago in the Destiny 1 E3 gameplay reveal trailer, making it the first exotic in the franchise that we ever laid eyes on. The Thunderlord. There are a lot of awesome weapons in Destiny. Thunderlord is one of the best. Exotic heavy machine gun. It's got a sweet talent tree. The one up top, Rolling Thunder. Explosive rounds. When I get that one, this gun's gonna be a beast. This gun's had its ups and downs over the years, but as of late, mainly down. In Destiny 2, machine guns have found themselves in an odd spot over the last few years. They're very efficient at clearing weapons, but they do reside in the heavy slot, which most players reserve for weapons that can really pour on the single target damage quickly. Bungie has been making the active effort to get these weapons into a more viable spot though, fine tuning the weapon class's damage output with a few buffs over the past year and they are better. But with the launch of Arc 3.0 just earlier this week, Thunderlord did get its own specific update, now having intrinsic overload champion capabilities and getting a long overdue catalyst as well. So we'll check out how Thunderlord is faring currently and see if this is a weapon worth considering here in Season 18. But into the review with a quick look at the stats and perks. Thunderlord is an exotic arc heavy machine gun that is currently being handed out for free at the helm via the Gift of the Thunder God's chest for a limited time only. I'm not sure exactly how long this chest is going to hang around for, so just get to the helm and grab everything out of that chest while you still can. But I digress. This weapon has a base fire rate of 450 rounds per minute with 62 rounds in the magazine. And look, 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 as of Season 18, all weapon stats are now being displayed in-game. Thank you, Bungie. And Thunderlord's stat line is pretty darn solid. The only one that jumps out as exceedingly high is the aim assist at 90, but everything else there when compared to other heavy machine guns is either good or very good. And while the recoil direction is sitting at 70, which should cause this weapon to pull to the left a bit, it does feel very manageable, and I'll show you why in just a second. The intrinsic trait on Thunderlord is Rain Havoc, and it has been reworded a bit. Final blows with this weapon generate stunning lightning strikes from above, strong against overload champions. So there's our anti-overload capabilities. The exotic perk on this weapon is lightning rounds. The weapon fires faster, and more accurately, the longer the trigger is held. And I'd venture to say that it grows more stable as well. But continuous damage will generate lightning strikes as well. Also boosting Thunderlord's utility, armor piercing rounds, causing a bit of extra damage to shields while over penetrating targets. And feeding frenzy, a stacking boost to the weapon's reload speed, this will stack up to five times. Then the newly added catalyst, causing a lightning strike with this weapon partially reloads the magazine from reserves. Now, I would have liked to have seen some direct Arc 3.0 synergy come along with the catalyst as well, but this alone is a good addition. If you're trying to hunt this catalyst down, it can be found dropping from our core playlist activities, so Strikes, Crucible, or Gambit. It does drop at random, so may RNG be kind to you. But let's move on to the PvE section and start putting Thunderlord to the test. And hopping right in. On a kill, you can see that Lightning Strike occur. The Lightning Strike is AoE based and will damage enemies within its vicinity, but the damage will diminish based on proximity. I'll get into the specifics of that when we hop into the PvP section. Also, this will reload ammo once the Catalyst is unlocked. I did notice a little bit of inconsistency with this from time to time, but generally it's reliable at adding 7 rounds back into the magazine from reserves. And yes, this does work with the sustained damage lightning strikes as well, which we'll be taking a look at coming up. When the trigger is held, after every 20 rounds expended, the weapon's fire rate will increase from 450 to 600 to 720, and it will remain at 720 until the trigger is released. For the reload speeds, at base the full reload time for Thunderlord is 4.53 seconds. If you have a single machine gun loader mod equipped, this can be dropped down to 3.66 seconds. Now, if you have 5 stacks of Feeding Frenzy built up, the base reload will drop down to 3.14 seconds, and the speed with that machine gun loader mod equipped goes down to 2.67 seconds. For the ammo reserves, at base we can carry 220 total rounds, with one machine gun reserves mod equipped, 243, and with two copies, 265. But with that, let's get into some damage numbers. But as always, do keep in mind, PvE damage numbers are variable and will change depending on content scaling or enemy tier. This is why I try to keep all of my testing in the Conflux Lost Sector on Nessus versus Carl the Colossus. To keep these damage numbers consistent and comparable from video to video. Alright, we'll start out with the pre-Season 17 numbers. Before the global heavy machine gun buff that upped the weapon class's damage versus red bars and majors by 40% and 20% against boss tier enemies. Thunderlord was hitting Carl, who is a major target, for 3,527 points of damage on a crit and 2,516 to the body. The lightning strikes were dealing 7,330 points of damage, and the lightning occurs on every 10th round landed. So, maximum potential damage within a single magazine, considering all crits and 6 lightning strikes, 
came out to 262,684. Thanks to the ramping fire rate, the time to empty clocked in at 6.27 seconds. Maximum single mag damage per second, 41,891. Moving up to season 17, when the machine gun buff went into effect. Crits vs. Carl are now scoring 4,938 and body shots register 3,522. The lightning strike damage also improved to 10,262, all showing that 40% damage bump. Maximum single mag damage moved up to 367,728, with the time to empty remaining unchanged. So the post buff single mag damage per second came in at 58,649. Fast forward to present day, season 18. The actual damage values remain unchanged, but now we have a catalyst to factor in. Seven rounds are loaded back into the magazine from reserves on each lightning strike. So to figure out the overall effectiveness, we need to figure out how many bullets can be fired before the magazine empties out. And we need to find the time to fire off all of those rounds. We could just do this mathematically, but there does seem to be some latency between the lightning strikes and the ammo refund. So I figured a physical in-game test would better serve the purpose. I tried to run this versus Carl, but my attempts were in vain because he just dies off way too quickly. So I took it to Europa to test in the Legend Lost Sector. But this captain proved to be a slippery son of a bee, and I wasn't confident that I was getting a good read with him constantly teleporting. So after that failed attempt, I said, ooh, safeguard simulation on Europa. I can test versus the Gate Lord. Now, I still couldn't justify in my head that the results were 100% accurate, because all I could think was a bullet or two might have slipped off target here. So, sleep deprived and weary, at 1.30 in the morning, I dragged my butt into the grasp of Avarice Dungeon to test versus the Ogre. And I am happy to say that I am very confident with the numbers I gathered here. We're looking at 167 rounds expended without reloading in 15.03 seconds. And not that it really matters because I was being buffed by a well, going mainly for body shots, and in an environment that is damage skilled differently than our base test environment. Just in case you were curious though, that did deal just under 625,000 points of damage. But if we translate this data back to Carl now, 167 crits equates to 824,646 points of damage. We'll get 16 lightning strikes for an additional 164,192. Grand total, 988,383. Delivered in 15.03 seconds. Single mag damage per second with the catalyst, 65,791. So max single mag damage with the catalyst is obviously up a good bit from base, but we're also seeing an additional 7,000 points as far as DPS goes because we're working with that high-end fire rate for an extended period of time. So a pretty good boost from the catalyst. In Titans, just so you're aware, the ammo reloading capabilities of the catalyst do stack with Actium War Rig. So with sustained damage, that's undoubtedly going to let you dump every round of ammunition that you have in reserves. So for Thunderlord's performance in PvE, it has very good sustained damage. If you have the time, the bullets, and the catalyst unlocked, it's going to lay it on thick. Then, great ad clearing even in higher end content. Its high single shot damage and the collateral damage from the lightning strikes can make quick work out of packs of enemies. Plus, with the catalyst, that smaller 62 round magazine is much less of an issue with bullets constantly being reloaded. Also, intrinsic overload as of Season 18. It may not seem like a huge selling point currently since we do have overload machine gun in the seasonal artifact at only one energy point, but equipping Thunderlord can free up a mod slot and will remain a viable overload option long after this season is through. Speaking of artifact mods, Machine Gun Scavenger and Machine Gun Holster are in there currently. You're getting a good discount on these mods, and they do go a long way in boosting the weapon class's overall usability. Also, Sundering Glare, often associated with more precision-based weapons. But Thunderlord does have decent range and high aim assist, so rapidly landing crits to apply the 20% debuff from the mod can be quite simple. Then it's an easy way to become amplified. All you have to do is defeat targets with arc damage. Thunderlord's really good at that. Amplified, aside from its speed-associated boosts, is kind of like a building block buff inside the Arc 3.0 system. Other abilities become stronger when you are amplified, so having more access to it is never going to be a bad thing. But a few problems that I do have with Thunderlord still currently. The lower ammo reserves. You just can't pocket all that many bullets with Thunderlord. Even with two reserves mods equipped, 265 rounds isn't really a ton. And you can run through them quite fast if you're using this weapon to dump damage on a single target. Then, when using it in a single target damage scenario, it's not a weapon that's going to dump big damage quickly. The total damage output is very strong, but it takes a long time to get all that damage out. If you need burst damage, which is often favored in boss damage scenarios, Thunderlord really isn't the weapon that you want. Lastly, I wish the Catalyst did a little bit more. The auto reloading is nice, and it definitely helps out, but I was really hoping for some direct Arc 3.0 synergy, something like Lightning Strike's Jolt Targets. I mean, a Lightning Strike causing the target to chain out additional Lightning would have been awesome, 
Even if that made the weapon a touch too strong for Bungie's liking, I wouldn't be complaining. But we got what we got, and maybe I should just be happy that Bungie finally gave Thunderlord some love. But with that, let's move on to the PvP section. In the Crucible, Thunderlord will hit for 41 points of damage on a crit, and 30 points of damage to the body. This puts its optimal time to kill at 0.53 seconds with 4 crits and 1 body shot, and the body shot time to kill sits at 0.8 seconds with 7 shots landed. But it does have a pretty forgiving middle ground time to kill, downing opposing guardians with 2 crits and 4 body shots in 0.67 seconds. The Lightning Strike, when it procs, will do a maximum of 66 points of damage. The maximum radius of the Lightning Strike seems to be about 5 meters, seeing Agent Sparkles take only 4 points of damage at that distance. The sustained Lightning Strikes aren't really going to come into play unless we're squaring off against the Guardian in a super, in which case they could help out a little bit. For Thunderlord's physical range, it can stretch out to about 40 meters and still see full damage. Past that point, damage falloff will begin to occur. For the pros in PvP, Thunderlord is a very accurate and very forgiving weapon. Connecting on headshots does feel pretty effortless, which aids in hitting that high end time to kill. And it can be quite effective from longer ranges, as long as you tap those shots in instead of bearing down on the trigger. Plus, this weapon can make dealing with multiple guardians a bit easier if a secondary target eats some of the lightning damage when securing the initial kill on a primary target. Then, just like in PvE, you can amplify yourself with this weapon. There's plenty of tangible crucible benefits associated with that buff as well. But a lot of its exotic functionality is cut off at the knees in PvP. You're probably not going to see that ramping fire rate come into play since you're only getting 25 rounds when you pull heavy. You're only going to see the sustained damage lightning strikes occurring on rare occasions, and neither feeding frenzy or the catalyst benefits are going to help out much since you're generally not going to be working with rounds in reserves. And then the time to kills. 0.53 and 0.8 are very good for a primary weapon. Not so much for a heavy weapon. It doesn't feel great getting outgunned when you have a heavy weapon in your hand, and Thunderlord definitely opens the door for that to happen. And those cons don't necessarily make it a bad weapon, it's reliable, it's sturdy. But does it justify the use of both your heavy slot and your exotic selection? Probably not. So in the Crucible, Thunderlord is still just Thunderlord for the most part, but it definitely is bringing a little bit more to the table in PvE. I wouldn't go as far to call this a top tier exotic now, but it is a whole lot better than it was just a few months ago. And it will serve as a solid user friendly option that can handle much of the game's content just fine. But hey, if you did enjoy the video, please remember to leave it a like and consider subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming channel to catch more of my Destiny 2 content in the near future. Oh, and I have been making the attempt to be a little bit more active on Twitter as of late. Ironworker814 on that platform if you'd like to catch me over there too. But regarding the video, if you have anything to add, drop it down in the comments. I always enjoy hearing your thoughts. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out this weapon breakdown. You guys are awesome, and I will catch you on the next one.